Maya and the Western um, consciousness um, that to um, bring the synthesis between those two ways of perceiving the West wanting to do something, wanting to have an effect, wanting to help the children, want to be involved in politics to do something, or the Green Movement, or climate change issues, or whatever, all of that, that we want to do something, um, is not the synthesis of saying, well, it's all an illusion, it's all mire anyway, so just, you know, look after yourself and relate to God. So there seems to be a dichotomy there, particularly, I think, for us in the West. And is, would not the synthesis be, and this is a question I have, um, that, that by doing that detachment, which is a very Eastern phrase in a way from Buddhism, detach yourself from the world, that, that you're actually not detaching and pulling away, but that by doing that sort of mind-changing looking at it in a different way, changing of perception, that you're actually having an extraordinary effect upon everything. Yeah, I, I feel exactly, that's exactly what we're coming to. It's, <coughs> it is an awareness that, that through detachment, non-judgment, or I would say being in alignment with our divine purpose, that that is, is the highest helpfulness that you could have. That you are literally being fully a part of a complete retranslation of the whole perception of the world. Mm -hmm. And is that helpful? It's the most helpful. It's the other attempts that you're describing were very noble attempts, very altruistic attempts. And underneath the altruistic attempt was was a desire to to make a contribution. Uh, to provide some helpfulness. And the prayer at the beginning of the course, on 24 on the first edition, and I think it's on 28 in the second edition, third edition, says, I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent Him who sent me. That truly helpful, putting those two words together is, we could say that, that as you rise up in consciousness and you start to clear away the dualistic thinking, <coughs> and you get much more in line with this beautiful purpose, that's, that's forgiveness I'll call it, the more in line you come with forgiveness, that, that you become truly helpful, and sometimes people will say, well does that just mean you just kind of sit in the lotus position then, and the world goes on, and you're just sitting there meditating. No, actually what I've found is that as I've come into alignment with this purpose, the body of David still seems quite active, you know, talking, going around in 31 countries, uh, going to third world countries where I do get the chance to interact with children and families and all walks of life. I'll, I'll occasionally meet people that are involved in politics or science or just you name it. Uh, it's like a huge broad swath <coughs> of those that I come into contact with some celebrities, um, it's just a huge wide range and, and, uh, and it's always, there's always that helpfulness component. Um, to give you an example, going down to Argentina um, and going out with my friend, you know, to go to many gatherings like this, um, taking along a little sack of coins and she brought a little sack of uh, little angels along because well, when I was down there the, the economy had collapsed, people, there was a lot of starvation and children, sometimes small children coming up to, to do juggling acts, want to wash the windshield, you know, the car, to do anything to bring home something to support their mothers and you know, their families and everything and so the Spirit had us, you know, get a sack of coins and and my friend brought along these little angels, and they would do whatever they would do and during the stop in the red light. They would do their little performance, and then we would have these wonderful holy encounters, one after the next with these uh, children. And their eyes 
light up and sparkle. It was, a, it was very active, you know. We weren't just off kind of sitting and meditating. We were right there in the, you might say, the love just use us as if the body is like a marionette that is completely neutral. It has no causative effect, but the marionette can be moved, might, you might say, or I call it being done through. And, and here we are at a, at a Christian, a Catholic facility, and I think back to the lives of the saints and the mystics. I mean, now we have Pope Francis, you know, the name was chosen to, in remembrance of Saint Francis, you know, who, who went out. Uh, he didn't just sit in Assisi uh, with a loincloth and his legs folded, you know, he, they rebuilt the church that, that was broken down there in San Damiano. He went out among the streets to share the good news, much like Jesus and the Apostles had done. It seemed to be a very active component to St. Francis's life. And of course, many other saints uh, could be said to be into so social action. The key is, is the motivation. When you clear the mind of all identification with the body and the world, and you come back into that purity of alignment with spirit, then the body can still seem to be quite animated uh, in a state of pure detachment. And I think Jesus was a very good example of that. Um, he had his times where he went off to the mount to pray and commune, and certainly there's no denying that. But he was what I call like a public mystic. He took this beautiful non-dual state of absolute love, just absolute love and non-judgment, and then it was demonstrated, you know, through his life, and especially those last three years, as public, I mean, raising the dead, miracles left and right, sermons, you know, walking amongst the people, very much like the new pope would go on the mass transit and be right among the people, not kind of off some in secluded, some secluded place. And I look at how the last quarter of a century of my life has gone. I mean, I actually worked with the course starting in 1986, and those first few years were, were quite, it was like a lot of inner purification going on, um, very much like traditional mysticism. And yet, I reached a point where I stood got in alignment with this joy, and this happiness, and this stillness, and this non-judgment, and then that's precisely how the Spirit has used the body of David, mostly over the last quarter of a century. It's just been on the move, it's been with the people, it's been at gatherings like this, and many, many others, um, countless others, thousands and thousands of others in, in different countries and cultures and everything, and it wasn't about trying to make the world a better place. Uh, I had done plenty of that <laughs> earlier in the life of David as, a, as an angry activist. At least, a, at least I could say a very frustrated activist facing the problems of the world from more of a personal perspective. Very frustrating. And I do see that that's, that's the synthesis that oftentimes when I hear people talk in non-dual terms. Um, I had actually met a woman one time in uh, Belgium and uh, they had had some, some contact with some beautiful, beautiful non-dual teachings and everything. And then they came to me and they said, okay, we, we've decided to stop our Course in Miracles group. We're not going to use the course anymore. We're checking the course and this and this because, because it's all an illusion and we don't was it all, it's an illusion, that kind of thing, and this and that. I think it's probably the most overused words and phraseology <laughs> for a mind that really needs to go into that experience, to just kind of use that as a catchphrase or a cliché. It, it, I call it metaphysical ghosting. Like ghosting over an actual healing that's necessary, just using the words, it's all an illusion. Jesus didn't even in the Bible, you look at the Gospels, you, you don't see him. Lo, I tell you, it's all an illusion, you know. He just uh, doesn't use that. 
Um, and so for me, you know, I feel like going into the experience, this woman in Belgium, she was just saying, well, I think I'm just going to quit the course. And uh, so I just started to ask some questions saying, you know, do you still feel you have wants and desires in this world and, and kind of going down the list of things and, oh yeah, I'm sure. But, but it's all an illusion and that's, you know, it was more just kind of using the words, it's an illusion to kind of cover over still things that were still stirred up and con contradicting and conflicting inside. And, you know, it's great when we have high beautiful beings like Krishnamurti, you know, that would just question things so deeply. Um, I think there was a man one time that came to Socrates, if we go back to the ancient Greeks, and, and um, basically was talking about his, his purity and, and so on and so forth. And Socrates just said, do you really believe that in all events and encounters and circumstances that you experience the truth in every, in every way possible? And the man just walked away. <laughs> wouldn't even answer him, because he asked such a penetrating question. You know, there can't be any contradiction in the truth, you know. We have to come to that experience. So I definitely feel what you're saying, that um, we don't want to just have like a stereotype of, of the Eastern talk of Maya and the Western kind of activism of, of trying to be helpful we do have to reach that point of synthesis, or that, that point of, I call it integration, where the mind is holistic and integrated, and then what you do comes from what you think, and if you're thinking with God, and you are spoken through, or, or spirit seems to do through you in that peaceful place, then that is, that's a beautiful place.